Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. Here we are at 5.44 a.m. Central Daylight Time, June, June 13, 2019. Daylight is here. It's 65 degrees this morning. Can you believe it? In southeastern Louisiana, it's unheard of, really, in mid-June. Wait a minute. Cool weather in June... But people are saying the world. Oh, anyway, now, um, all right, okay. Well, this morning we have from 1961 Inverhouse Green Plaid. Here it is. It was $11.99 for the liter at um, Dorgnax. Inverhouse Green Plaid Blended Scotch Whiskey, a real distillery, Inverhouse Distilling. They have like five distilleries in Scotland. Green Plaid is the one, the cheap one that they send to the, you know, an inexpensive one they send to the United States. From what I can tell, it's a USA only product and it used to be sold in Japan, might still be sold in Japan. You're never going to find out anything about it. The uh, Sazerac website doesn't tell you much. Well, actually, their website isn't functioning right now, really, to, to, to a large extent. So it didn't tell you much before, and it doesn't tell you much now. So sorry. Here's one I can tell you even less about. Piper Dean blended scotch whiskey, okay? Now, that Inverhouse is aged three years, and the Piper Dean is aged um, Says the founders company, Louisville, Kentucky. That's where it's bottled. Bottled Louisville, Kentucky. Age, 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 nothing. So that would be probably be the minimum three years. Imported makes sense. It's from Scotland. Product of Scotland. Blended Scotch whiskey. They say imported twice on the neck and the main body. Oak cask matured. That's not a remarkable statement because all the scotch is matured in oak cast, usually used cast. Premium quality. Now, that, that is remarkable. I bought this three years ago. I think it came out in 2016 for only $5.99. The price has gone up a little bit at Albertsons. $5.99. So for $5.99, you're getting a 750 milliliter scotch of remarkable quality. It's amazing. An expertly blended Scotch whiskey matured in fine oak cast. Well, okay, I'm sure it's expertly blended because all of these companies have experts that do the blending. Uh, but it's down to like a routine science, you know what I'm saying? Typical Sazerac bottle. It is produced by Sazerac for the Albertsons grocery chain. Super value, Albertsons. Julasco, Amigos, and so many other stores. So it's unlikely you'll see it anywhere else. I know I haven't ever. This thistles in the background. In the background. Okay. The thing I noticed. Here's IH Inver House. The thing I noticed about the Piper Dean is that it's pretty dull. Never said it tasted bad. I just said it didn't taste like really anything much like grain alcohol do they use single malt scotch whiskey yeah to give it the flavor the little that has but it's mostly grain alcohol grain column still grain it's pretty dull all right it's pretty light it might have coloring added i don't know though it's pretty light um date g16109 yep 109th day of 2016. What is G. Glenmore? It's one of those things Sazerac bought. Need to clean that a little bit. Okay. Uh, this one is Chicago, Illinois. That's where it's bottled. Let's see if I can find a code here, though. Interesting. It'd be interesting to find one. Yeah, it's.
the 73rd day of 2018, I guess, L. L is not sh Chicago. That's Louisville. But you see, um, It's interesting because it says imported by and bottled for Barton and Imports of Chicago, Illinois. So is it really bottled in Chicago or is it in, bottled in Kentucky for Barton, which has some headquarters in Chicago? And Barton, <laughs> their real headquarters is in Metairie, Louisiana, because that's their part of Sazerac and their headquarters is on Causeway Boulevard. Right about, I don't know, 200 yards from the shore of Lake Pontchartrain, if it's that far. I mean, we're talking about right, go any further, you're in the lake. But uh, anyway, they might still have a Barton office in Chicago, I mean, Sazerac's not too open about their operations. They tell you some stuff on their website, a lot of other things they won't talk about. So it's kind of a shadowy company in a way. They're privately owned. There's no board of directors. There's no stockholders. The whole company's wholly owned by Mr. and Mrs. William Goldring of New Orleans, Louisiana. So. They don't tell you anything except what they feel like telling you. All right. You say, well, it's a family owned business. Well, it certainly is. All right, let's get it going. Sorry for the delays. I was going to start at 530, but then I realized I had not watched. I hadn't posted the two Dire Straits songs on um, Rock and Roll Club. Well, I realized that, but then I realized I hadn't watched the highlights for the Arizona Diamondbacks at Philadelphia Phillies game. I said, let me watch that three minutes long. And um, right at the end, they took the pitcher out because Bryce Harper was coming at the bat. So he took out the pitcher and they changed him with the backup. And of course, Bryce, Bryce Harper struck out. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> See what you can get for a whole lot of money. All right. Um, so the Inver house is slightly lighter, but it's not significant. Will I be able to tell them apart? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't see why not. I think the Ember House is going to have a little more character and a little more body and a little more flavor, but it's not going to have a whole lot. So maybe it's going to be more difficult than I'm thinking. Uh, I could be fooling myself like Sticks would say. So I need to believe it because I don't know. I, I got a lot of thinking to do because even uh, the, the Whiskey Scout last night was telling me um, and everybody else got bored listening to that Whiskey Talk said he dropped off the hangout. Well, I don't blame him. We went an hour live, so that was good. Everybody had really good ales and one good, good, very good lager. Uh, but um, he said, I'm surprised because he thought Ember House performed a lot better than he had expected in his taste challenges. And I said, yeah, I thought uh, I saw what he was doing, so I thought it was going to be the same, but it didn't work out that way. Okay. Let's go with the challenge. I don't know which is which. I don't know which is which. I'll mix them up a few more times just to be on the safe side, but <laughs> it doesn't take long and I'm confused, which is what you want. You want to be confused. You don't want to know which is which. Unless you're going to cheat. And I don't know why anybody would be insane enough to cheat on a taste challenge with two obscure whiskeys. You know what I mean? Even if they were good whiskeys, like famous, why would you cheat? Or like, what would be the incentive for that? Oh man, this smells so much not like scotch. <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
there is some shadow of peat. But this smells just like ordinary American blended whiskey, really. Okay, it's Sazerac, so I could have I could have gone to a store and bought um what's the Sazerac blended whiskey to have around here? I don't know. I don't know. If the Heaven Hill is the big one around here, Heaven Hill. That's what it's called, Heaven Hill Kentucky blended whiskey. That's actually worse than this, I think. It's got that weird honeydew melon flavor. I don't know why anybody would want to drink that. And T.W. Samuels is kind of popular around here, too. That's another Heaven Hill. Um, I'll think of some. Oh, Ancient Age Preferred. Yeah, that's around here. Not real popular because it's not real available. But uh, when Dixie had that, I saw it yesterday. I don't think that this would, this would be similar to that. Yeah. Just nothing there. Now here, over here, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Just, so if you want a whiskey that's really cheap, about $6.99 for Piper Dean for the $7.50, $11.99 for Inver House Green Plaid for the $1,000, this will work. I mean, all it smells like is cereal grain. You know, if I was eating, I was eating cornflakes yesterday, bowl of cornflakes, poured milk in it, of course, and I put honey on the top to sweeten it. And people at work were saying, honey, why would you do, why would you use honey? Um, we all use sugar. I said, well, um, this was Louisiana clover honey from Bernard's. I think Bernard's honey. I said, well, it tasted good. <laughs> All natural. I think it's even organic honey. I don't know. I have to look at the label. But uh, but what the point I'm making about that is like cereal grain. Like I was eating the corn flakes and it tastes like, well, corn flakes. And it smells like that when you don't add the honey yet or the milk. Well, these are that way too. All right. It's like grain. American grain. Oh, yeah, well, there's an underlying slight, ever so slight peat. That, I guess that would make you realize it's not American blended whiskey. But I don't think it would be as obvious as you might believe. Especially this one over here. This has got to be Piper Dean because this has everything you were complaining about with Inver House and even more to complain about, meaning it has little to nothing there. He said, I only care about 40 proof. That's my interest in drunk. 40 proof. I'm gonna mix it with, with a uh, great value cola anyway, or sure fine cola. Well, if you're gonna do that, you may as well just go for the cheapest thing on the market. Just go to um, Walmart, and if you want whiskey, get the uh, Caliber Canadian Blended, nine ninety six for uh, one thousand seven hundred and fifty milliliter. It's as much as these two together, full. Or you can get the vodka or the gin, whatever. They even have a, a citrus flavored gin. Hey, yeah. Caliber citrus flavored gin. $9.96. They're all $9.96, no matter what you want. Yikes. If that's your only goal, the alcohol infusion, well, that's going to be the most utilitarian thing to buy. Now, if you want some real flavor and character, this is not where you want to be right here. These two is not where you want to be. Okay. It's sweetness. It's like, well, you've eaten a bowl of sweet corn before, probably. I guess that's what it tastes like. Uh, corn grits. Huh? I haven't had grits in a while. Of course, that has salt added. What is corn grits? That's white hominy, dried and then granulated, pulverized into grit. And then you add the water and it makes it puff up again and you eat it like a, you know, like a porridge or whatever you call that. 
uh, you can get the polenta, which is the pulverized yellow corn grits. I have never tried. I've had yellow, yellow hominy. You can buy that at Walmart. Bushes, you know, bushes, baked beans. They make yellow hominy and white hominy in a can. Yeah, and of course it has salt in it uh, to preserve it, the sodium. But yeah, but they taste like this. <laughs> I was talking to this woman from, she said she from, uh, where did she say she was from? Croatia, I think she said, Croatia. She said, I look, I'm looking for Polinta, big tall lady. Nice looking, about 25. Built like, you know, like I smash things with my arms. But she says, uh, she was with a group of people. I'm looking for polenta. I said, it's over here. To feed my baby. That's what she said, to feed my baby. So I can drink this and I can imagine if a baby was eating yellow corn grits all the time as baby food, the baby would be big. The baby is big. Okay. Oh, well, um, there's a minuscule, a nominal, let's call it, there's a nominal uh, peat flavor. What about smoke? Oh, well, you could forget that. You know, blow that out of your mind. I would guess that this is not even 80-20 blend. I don't think there's a requirement in Scotland. I didn't see anything on their regulations about the percentage, the ratio. In America, it's 80-20. That's the minimum. If you're going to make a blended whiskey, it has to be at least 20% straight whiskey. Didn't say how good the whiskey has to be, <laughs> but straight. I didn't see anything in the Scottish web, uh, uh, gov government of the United Kingdom, Scotch regulations about the percentage. I'm thinking this might be 95% grain alcohol and 5% single malt. I'm serious. But you might know the regulations better than me, but I, 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 I don't recall seeing that. And I don't know how many people sit down and get on the internet and look up whiskey regulations. I do. You probably don't. You say, well, I got better things to do than that. Okay. I'll grant you that. Mm. Same thing. And actually, if you want to be techno, like Larry Holmes said, if you want to be techno, this one is a little harsher than the other one. It has a lot more harsh bitey grain alcohol. It's like a cat scratching you. It's as pleasant as fingernails on a chalkboard. You say, that's pretty harsh. Yes, it is harsh. <laughs> oh, wow, man. The things we do for taste challenges. Do, 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 do. Like drinking this kind of stuff. All right, I have the windows open now. I went open some windows because it's 65 degrees. Uh, it's not exactly dry outside. The humidity is gonna come into play later. So don't be fooled. Summertime is right around the corner and um, this is just a hint, 65. We may see that again, September 28th. <laughs> Mm. Ouch. That's what you say when you sip these. Ouch. Whoa, mama monkey. That is. That is uh, a strong argument for mixing. <laughs> People tell me, you ought to make mixed drinks instead of drinking that stuff straight. And I'm like, no, no, no. I want to get the full flavor. I want to get the full experience. Well, I'm getting the full experience, unfortunately. And I'm serious. It's pretty uh, un smooth, <laughs> unenjoyable, if you want to use that terminology. Oh, 
Uh-oh. Did I just detect some smoke? Yeah, it was fleeting. Fleeting. You know, like uh, Schlitz, just a kiss of the hops. But I was just a ghost of the smoke. <laughs> if you said, I don't like scotch because it's too smoky, you couldn't make that argument here. Because there isn't any. You could say, I don't like this stuff. I don't like this stuff because it's got too much bite. It's harsh. And it's garish. And it's, you know, um, unrefined. Well, yeah, okay, I'll go along with that. But don't tell me it's too smoky because there's no way. And don't even say it's peaty because it's not happening. <laughs> that is not happening here. Now, you might feel like you've been attacked with, like that movie, The uh, Attack of the Mushroom People. You say, well, it's the attack of the corn people. The whiskeys of the corn. The corn, the corn. Yes, I would certainly back that up. <laughs> I would uh, second your comment because this is what this is. It's like, we like the corn, the corn that goes <sniffs> Well, Bunny and Tigre, and we got the corn. All right. That, that would be what we have here. What we have here is a failure to peat smoke, you know. Um, wow. You say, who's the winner? Who's the winner? The winner. Could you use such a term in this challenge as winner? I don't know if I feel comfortable using that terminology, winner. Because what did you win? You know what I mean? In my anti-war videos on mainly on, well, on this channel and on anti-war, the other alternative channel, I'm always saying that. Don't use that terminology too loosely. They won the war. You say, well, what did they win? You see what I'm saying? So in this case, what did you win? A headache? A turned stomach? Bad feelings? Like the era of good feelings? No, this would be the era of bad feelings. You say, well, the Beatles said they had a feeling feeling down inside. Oh, yeah. Well, I have a feeling that these are not so good. I think by some bizarre way, by some way, in some way, this one is better. And I just made a major lecture rant consideration about how it was so harsh. I never said it wasn't harsh. Okay. Let me rephrase that. This is less monstrous. <laughs> now, that would be a good sales point. Go into the liquor store and it says, Piper Dean, less monstrous than other cheap scotch whiskeys. Now, that's a good selling. I think I could come up with the, these slogans. Less monstrous than other cheap blended scotch whiskeys. Now, I think that would work. It might because people would say, what does that mean, less monstrous? And they might buy it just to experience. Like if, if I was selling Hartley brandy, I could come up with all kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, you could say comical terms. I saw Hartley brandy yesterday. I said, look at you over there on that shelf for $8.99. And that's on sale. I said, when Dixie, you ought to be ashamed because other stores will have it for $7.99 regular price. And here you are on sale. Get it while it lasts, Hartley Brandy. I said, y'all are some rogues. And people buy it. He said, that's the, that's the part that, it's not that they're trying to sell it for $8.99, it's that people actually buy it, I know, right? They buy it, and then they have the peach, and they have the, the apple. I've never tried any of those flavored Hartley Brandies. I never will. Oh, and pineapple, I think. I don't want to be there. It's bad enough. I've got a liter of the uh, cherry pie pie hole. 
And Diageo sells that with a straight face, which I admire them for that. Because my friend David took a little sip. He said, let me try that. He said, oh, that's cough medicine. That's cough medicine. I said, yeah, it's pretty much Robitussin. <laughs> I said, you sure you want to try that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that thing, you could really go on about an hour just ranting and raving about pie hole cherry pie because the flavors are so complex, but they're complex in all the wrong ways. And it's 80 proof. You know what I'm saying? It's still in the field commanding troops like Colonel Kurtz, but it's a, you know, but it's a, a drink, not a commander in a fictional 1979 movie. But you, you need to see what I'm saying. Um, I'm, I'm ripping on these, rightfully so. I'm criticizing these, rightfully so. I'm denigrating, downgrading, excoriating these, rightfully so. But to be fair, and I always try to be fair, and you might say, yeah, yeah but you're crazy. People say I'm crazy, but I'm in demand, you see. But I'm fair. Um, you could talk about there. There is some complexity with these. It's not good complexity. You see what I'm saying? They have a lot of different levels of character and taste and aroma. I, I, I'll give them that. It's just not any flavors or aromas that you would necessarily want to experience. Um, but I'm going to end it. Um, oh man. If you want to get by paying cheap prices for blended scotch, go ahead, but you're not really getting by because this is what you're getting. And the thing about these kind of products is they always get worse as you go through it. You know what I'm saying? They don't get better. It just starts off questionable. And the more you drink it and the more you experience it, the worse it gets. And I'm trying to be honest and I'm not trying to get a cheap laugh. You know, I don't buy these inexpensive, let's call it, products so I can get a cheap laugh, you know what I'm saying? And people say, ha ha, ha ha ha, yeah, I had that garbage, ha ha ha. I just buy it because it's on the market. I say, well, let me try it and see. But then you're thinking, I don't know, it's probably going to be, and it is, okay. I think this is Piper Dean. But the funny thing about that, and I'm going to end it. A lot of viewers will say, oh, yeah, but I'm attracted to that. It's like a perverse enjoyment. I have, you know, I have this attachment to quaint, odd things. If it's just standard upper, upper level mediocrity, you know, tolerable, tolerable premium, you know, like um, Jack Daniels, something like that. It's boring to me. You know, it's like competent liquor. It's competent. It always works. It's the same every time. It's like Budweiser, you know, but they say their interest level sometimes will gravitate towards this because it's so aberrant, you know, so they have like this aberrant attraction to it or this attraction to aberrant products. Yeah, it's kind of funny, you know, because you say they sell it and that's what you and it continuously sells. So you just you wonder that's that's some of the attraction to me Like you just wonder like who buys this on purpose i'm buying it for a review so i have an excuse i have cover you know what i'm saying i can establish not deniability well yeah that too because i can i can deny that i'm buying it to enjoy i can just say oh no i'm doing it for reviews you know i have a reason i have a reason to do it but then you wonder but everyone else is buying it just because they want it and then you wonder what is that you know why is that <laughs> So that's the fascination here. Uh, Maxwell says, hi, Ron. Hello, Maxwell, over there in the Russian Federation. Well, we're, we're wrapping it up in 30 minutes of um, questionable content. <laughs> Not my fault because the products are questionable. I'm going to say this is uh, Piper Dean. Please be Piper Dean, but it doesn't. Ho! Happen again. I'm sorry, Whiskey Scout, but... Uh, <laughs> In this case, in my case, and it could be that I don't know what I'm doing. There's always that possibility. Uh, but in in this case, the Inver House is performing so poorly that it almost boggles the mind. It really almost boggles the mind. So um, to imagine, to, to, to 
to imagine that Piper Dean, the lowly store brand private label Piper Dean could go toe to toe with Enver House and, and, and confuse me on the two is, is astounding. So um, you say, well, that's kudos to Piper Dean. No, it ain't really. It's just an indictment against Enver House Green Plaid that it could be such a colossal failure, really. So uh, next up is um, two days from now. I do believe it's uh, 100 Pipers. Now I'm going to, I'm going to say that. And I, and if I have to eat my words, fine. I'm going to say no, no. 100 Pipers will destroy Inverhouse. It will destroy it. I'm predicting that ahead of time that it will be no kind of real contest and 100 Pipers will annihilate it. And 100 Pipers ain't even that good. Not the American one. I don't know. Maybe that 12-year age they have in India is, is, is good. But So anyway, get, get ready for uh, more, more sadness. All right. All right, if you say, when will this change? Like, when are we going to have some really quality stuff? Um, hmm. Well, help is on the way. Where do I go? Who do I turn to? 